Hi, and good morning, family, YouTube family. So good to join with you. Hi, sis. Good morning. Good morning. You're looking good radiant. Morning. Yeah, looking lovely. All right, you guys, here we go. We're plowing ahead. Lesson 217, still in the review and the main idea. Sis, I'm really feeling like I know how much you love this lesson and how dear it is or near and dear to your heart. Do you want to you wanna take it? Yeah, thank you. Thanks yeah. for all yeah, it just so, feels right. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, lesson 217, I am not a body, I am free, for I am still as God created me. Um, and we're reviewing lesson 197. It can be but my gratitude, I earn. I prefer to rephrase that in uh, to it can be only my gratitude. I okay. We're kicking the butt out. <laughs> That's right. No butts in here. Right? No butts. Okay. Butts out. It can be only my gratitude. I earn. Mm. Yeah. And what does that mean? Who, does should, that mean? who should give thanks for my salvation, but myself? And how but through? salvation can i find the self to whom my thanks are due speaking about the holy self yes yeah. i am not a body i am free for I am, for i am still as god created me and it's interesting as we'll see in this lesson as we unpack it mm -hmm. we're not going to write through the whole lesson but we're going to touch on the highlights of it hopefully have an experience of what he's speaking about here yeah i'm excited experience right rather mm -hmm. than just intellectual um through through this experience we're going to find that we really are not a body that we are free mm -hmm. and that we remain exactly as god created us as purely spirit as the holy self not mm -hmm. from anybody else or god we are That's joined it. And this is really this dovetails beautifully with yesterday's lesson about it can be but my it could only be myself that I crucify. Um, same concept, you know, based on the same truth that there is just one of us. Remember that there's a light in your brother that is literally your identity and that only the thoughts of bodies would seem to have fragmented and um, separated what we are as one. So now when, what uh, we can take a look at lesson 197 and unpack it and you can see that uh, true gratitude, it's only my own gratitude because it's the self, the self in my brother, the self in, in, in this seeming body, it's the same self as what's the light in my brother, it's one. Okay, so it really, it's bolstering that, that same idea, that same truth, there's just one here. All right, so flipping over to 197, what do you have for notes, sis? So, yeah, um, I just want to go through the first paragraph of 197 here. Um, here is the second step we take to free your mind from the belief in outside force pitted against your own. You make attempts at kindness and forgiveness, he says. Mm -hmm. You make attempts at kindness and forgiveness. Yet you turn them to attack again unless you find external gratitude and lavish thanks. Your gifts must be received with honour, lest they be withdrawn. Oh, can we stop there? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. This, this, it's so big because, let, yeah, let's talk about false gratitude. Just like there's false innocence and there's uh, forgiveness to condemn, this gratitude that we uh, display um, I mean, excuse me, the gifts that we give in this world. Let's be radically honest. Do you not give to establish specialness? Do you give to get points? Do you give to grow closer to one as opposed to another? Do you always carry the price tag of your gifting or what you had to do in order to give that gift in the back of your mind? Because there's a part of the mind that's ready to pounce depending on the reception that your gift receives. Are they overjoyed or are they just mildly, you know, they just give you a half smile, right? 
um, it, it's, yeah, you've got big outlines on the reception that your gift should receive. And if not, how quickly do you jump into judgment and resentment and you withdraw quickly, right? And it's justified. Look what I did and look now look how you're behaving in light of what I just did for you. Anybody recognize that? Especially around holiday times or birthdays. Who gets pissed off at somebody if they forget their birthday? I gotcha! <laughs> how, how offensive! I mean, there's the specialness right there. Totally. And unfortunately, what that does is while we, while we believe it, that's what we unconsciously believe about God. Yes. That's yes, right? So his his gifts come with strings attached because wow. our gifting always has strings attached. So we we project that onto God. Yeah. And certainly he's going to withdraw it because we're going to fail and he's going to, you know, kill us, <laughs> torture us. Yeah, there's a lot of scorekeeping going on. Yeah. Right, if we're to be honest. Yeah. Yes. So it can be but or only my gratitude I earn. Mm -hmm. So giving thanks, gratitude is giving thanks genuinely from the heart, right? When we see someone happily surprised, really happily surprised, mm -hmm. and genuinely overcome by a, a real gift mm -hmm. or um, a really kind gesture, mm -hmm. how do we feel in that moment? You know, mm -hmm. when, when we see somebody that um, is the recipient of a beautiful gesture yeah and we see them burst into tears mm -hmm. we burst into tears or at least you know tears well up in our own eyes right yes in that moment mm -hmm. their happiness and gratitude is our own in that moment in that moment there are no separate selves in that, what I would like to say, in that state of grace, as we join with that other, their happiness is our happiness. Our happiness is their happiness. Yes. Um, we're, we're, we're joining them. Right. Our minds are joined in those moments. That, that's the light of Christ in us. That erases the darkness in not just both our minds, but that ripple effect goes out to touch every mind. Yeah. And in that joining when we join in that feeling the body falls away in our awareness mm. it's not present we don't have thoughts we don't have selfish thoughts of self-gratification yeah. in those moments our heart opens and we go to join with that the other person as they're receiving right. we receive through their receiving yeah right so what you're pointing to i think it's really good to notice if you go back to the old um the examples that i was giving of when that's fearful giving it's it's got fear in it right expectations and judgment so there's a purification process going on that the impulse to give is the impulse to love another and love without an agenda is being extended from you to a brother because it, it because love is doing what it does by its very nature it extends it wants to extend and relate and to know itself and it needs relationship and so this loving impulse comes through you allow it through selfless giving to a brother and it's truly given but in that true gift love is then turned around and reflected back through remember the light in us extends out and it's received by the the light that's your identity your true identity in a brother and shines right back at you so love is offered received and extended back and this is a fearless state and that's why the body can't be recognized it's not it's not important it's not there it's not the object it's not the end it was simply the communication device so that love has taken the lead and that's all that's going on and we're not aware of bodies that felt state where you tear up you feel union so 
I don't know. What do you think, sis? You want to? Absolutely. I mean, um, can we just talk a bit, little bit more? Yeah. About, um, because what happens in that moment, um, what happens in that moment is in that state of grace when we join with another, another in their receiving, is our receiving. Um, that's the miracle impulse, right? But it yeah. becomes unblocked in that moment because we're joining with another at the heart level. Like you said, love does what it does, right? Yes, yes. And so the miracle impulse at that moment, which we have miracle impulses every moment, the issue is that because we're body-centered, mm -hmm. self-centered, mm -hmm. and uh, full of fear, Mm -hmm. We block those miracle impulses. That's it. And, and uh, you know, because we block those miracle impulses, the outcome of that is physical pain, emotional pain, sickness, relationship conflict, etc. That's yeah. right. So it's in these moments where where we become selfless, mm -hmm. we become bodyless, and we join with another. The yeah. miracle impulse is immediately unblocked, and and in that joining, of course, any any concerns that we might have had about the body, or about specific problems in the gap that the ego projected, they they can be healed, right? In the yeah. selfless joining extension, yes, and. And, and it really needs bearing, repeating, because I don't think we've talked about this before, but what you just brought up is so key. You know, love is what we are and love extends by its nature. And when we're not allowing that to happen because we're body centered or we, we value the body, the body, which is fear, acts as a shunt. It's like taking a pipeline and, you know, cinching it or using a pipe wrench and, and closing it off. And what happens is those miracle impulses literally become backed up and they're distorted. And that's what causes the body to become sick and age and become diseased and to die. So it, you know, if we're just effortlessly being love, the body would be healthy and perfect and whole until we let it, we laid it aside. Cause that's its function. The only function it can have that won't turn on itself. Everything else that we use for fear is literally what kills the body. So that's that's great. So letting that loving impulse flow to our brothers liberally. Why? Because that's what we desire and value and that's what we are. Now there's going to be a question in the room. What if I wanted to extend lovingly from my heart, but they don't seem to appreciate or even want my gifts and Jesus who knows us so well says to us in paragraph four, it does not matter if another thinks your gifts unworthy. In his mind, there is a part that joins with yours in thanking you. So remember, behind the brother's body, there's a light that is your identity. And that's what he's talking about. So it doesn't matter if the avatar isn't appreciative of your attempt or desire to extend and join. There's a part in his mind or her mind that knows what you're doing and is grateful. And that is your identity. Love's always grateful in itself to find it anywhere and everywhere. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> Where's your cup of tea? Thanks. <laughs> mm. You guys see the frog? <laughs> okay. One. Hey, little green guy. <laughs> so cute. All right. So, um, you know, you... I really want to show how in this lesson, how when we join in that gratitude, when somebody receives a gift and we join, we now, you know, we become emotionally touched by them receiving the gift gift their receiving is our receiving that's it okay that's how god is mm -hmm. when we extend selflessly in genuine love and when we receive he, he his joy is increased yes 
Yes. As we, as we co-create, he sends forth these loving impulses. And when we don't block them through body identification and we take these perfect gifts of love and extend them to our brothers, he's in our mind. He's receiving these gifts because we're sending it to the God in our brother. So his joy is ever increasing. What This is our song of thanks to God. To be as he, as he created us and to be in our function as he caused us to be, which is this one round hole of ecstatic extension of love and the gratitude that arises naturally as a result of that love. Remember yesterday, it was love and gratitude. They, you can't have one without the other if they're genuine. Yeah. It says, God blesses every gift you give to him, and every gift is given him because it can be given only to yourself, and what belongs to God must be his own. True, and a gift isn't a gift unless it's shared. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I sometimes refer to Mrs. Eddy, but she because I have great respect for her, but she did say that here on earth, the closest that we come to, to God's love is in the, the mother child relationship, because that love endures regardless of the circumstances. A mother can never just turn it off. Uh, the love that she feels for her child. I'm talking about a, a relatively emotionally healthy mother. <laughs> yes, it lives on, on under all circumstances. So um, anyway, sis, do you think it might be a good idea to show uh, that video clip or? Yeah, yeah? that might be fun. So here's a beautiful example of the felt state. And we just were asking you to drop into your heart and join us for a brief video clip. Yeah. Okay. Here we, we go. We need to explain that this baby is deaf. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. The baby is deaf from birth. And this is the first time it hears its mother's voice. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I never seen that face before. Hi. <laughs> Are you emotional? You're gonna make me cry. Hi. Yeah, are you gonna be emotional like your mama? Yeah. You're so sweet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I love you. I love you. <laughs> Feel that? Yeah, I'm such a baby. <laughs> such a baby. I love you, she said. Yeah. You could feel the baby really receiving that deep, that gift. Hearing that for the first time, he's mine. Yeah. And I've often thought about what it would be like. <clears throat> I think I've mentioned this before, but when we see children in strollers or in stores or a baby being carried over the daddy's shoulder and you're standing behind there and the baby looks at you, you know, we just kind of, we forget the mythical me and we just go, <laughs> we go into contortions and ooey gooey voices and our eyes get real big and we're just so innocent. We're right there and the baby's just looking at us without any filter and you're looking into this... The eyes of innocence, the eyes of God are literally like beholding you. And you're just so free in that moment. And then only because of so-called time and past and our conditioning and the fear, just layers and layers of fear that have encrusted upon that precious first innocence that we hide behind and that's the only reason why we don't meet adults with that same openness and excitement and awe and I mean can you imagine 
going into a store and just completely gushing over somebody you've never met before and you just be holding them with the eyes of love. That's possible if we're willing to drop our fear and the, and the ego filter that we've made to protect ourselves from our brothers who are one with us. Yeah, it's really powerful. We all want this because we all know that this is true. <laughs> can be but my gratitude I am. Mm -hmm. Can I read the last paragraph? Yep. Give thanks as you receive it. Be you free of all ingratitude to anyone who makes yourself complete. And from this self is no one left outside. So he's saying let go of all ingratitude towards anyone and everyone. Even people from our past, sis? Everyone. Mm. Let them, yeah, release them from your filter. Release them from how they have never been. Release them from the script and the roles that you have assigned to them. And be and give thanks. Give thanks for all the countless channels which extend this self. There's the light in every single brother. Be grateful to that. Look for that. Find that. All that you do is given unto him. And all that you think can only be his thoughts, sharing with him the holy thoughts of God. Earn now the gratitude you have denied yourself when you forgot the function God has given you. But never think that he has ever ceased to offer thanks to you. Okay. Thanks, sis. There you go. Lesson 197. We hope you felt that and took that in. I know I did. See baby Christ everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's all we're seeing. That's all we're seeing. Yeah. And it's fun. Thanks, family. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sis. Thank you. Mm -hmm.